Caregiving can sometimes feel like an impossible struggle. Caregivers may be torn between taking care of loved ones and trying to maintain balance in life. The good news is that it doesn't have to be that way. The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson is here to focus on the conversation of caring. You're not alone. In fact, you're in exactly the right place to share stories and learn tips and resources to help you and your loved ones. So now, please welcome the host of The Caring Generation, Pamela D. Wilson. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, speaker, consultant, and guardian of The Caring Generation. The Caring Generation focuses on the conversation of caring, giving us permission to talk about aging, the challenges of caregiving, and everything in between. It's no surprise that needing care or becoming a caregiver changes everything. The Caring Generation is here to guide you along the journey to let you know that you're not alone. You are in exactly the right place to share stories and learn about caregiving programs and resources to help you and your loved ones plan for what's ahead. Invite your aging parents, spouses, family, coworkers, colleagues, and friends to listen to the show. If you have a question or an idea for a future program, share your idea with me by responding to my social media posts on Facebook Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. You can also complete the caregiver survey on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, under the Contact Me button. This week, I'm answering the question caregivers ask, are hip fractures for elderly parents serious? The answer to this question will be combined with another question. How do injuries of any type affect adults, including those adults who may be caregivers. A hip fracture or any significant injury is life-changing. First, there are the obvious issues for elderly parents like their ability to walk and get around the house, drive a car, grocery shop, bathe, and perform everyday activities which can be very challenging after a hip fracture. But there are many other issues that family caregivers don't consider or even know to talk about unless you personally have been physically injured and had a similar experience. Gaining a broader perspective about the effect of injuries or a serious illness can give caregivers an entirely different perspective on how to support mom or dad's recovery or a spouse's recovery from a hip fracture or any serious health concern. Let's begin by discussing statistics related to recovering from a hip fracture for older adults. Breaking a hip or recovering from another injury like a torn rotator cuff is a significant life event. According to research by Murthy, in an article called Physicians' Perspectives of Prognosis and Goals of Care Discussions After Hip Fracture, I'll put a link to this article in the show transcript so you can read it yourself. It'll be on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, for this episode. It's episode 148, so go to PamelaDWilson.com, click on the Media tab, click on The Caring Generation, and look for episode 148. 48. Murthy's research talks about the fact that the percentage of older adults who die within one year of breaking a hip is between 25 to 30 percent. That is the significant number. The time to recover is based on the physical strength and health of the elderly person before the hip fracture. Recovery times can be anywhere between 6 to 12 months, so not immediate, not overnight, plus a few more statistics. Only 40% of the elderly who participate in aggressive physical therapy will be able to walk as well as they did before breaking the hip. Another 40% will never walk quite as well, and 20% will experience a significant decline in physical ability such that they lose their independence and really need a lot of additional care 
and support. There's a combination of factors in the reasons elderly parents experience falls or other injuries. If you're a family caregiver, the knowledge you're about to gain is vital for answering the question, are hip fractures serious for elderly parents? Because if you as the caregiver don't pay attention to these, you might eventually be the person who breaks a hip or experiences another type of physical injury, so there's a lot to be learned. Let's begin by discussing what happens when an elderly parent falls and breaks a hip. Mom or dad are usually taken to the emergency room by 911, and then they're admitted to the hospital. An orthopedic surgeon visits and decides to operate within 48 hours. The type of operation performed, meaning a full or partial hip replacement, inserting a pin, or sometimes not doing surgery if your parent is very frail can be the decision. Let's assume though that surgery happens. The day after surgery, the hospital staff wants your parent to be standing or walking depending on the doctor's orders. Now in some rare cases, a parent may be what's called non-weight bearing status. That means that they're not allowed to stand or walk on the leg where the hip fracture occurred for a certain period of time. In either situation though, it's highly likely that your parent will be sent to a nursing home, a skilled nursing community, or a rehab community after being hospitalized. Now those three different terms are used really for the same thing. It's, it's a nursing home is a nursing home, a skilled nursing community is a nursing home, a rehab community is a nursing home. They provide rehabilitation by way of physical therapy and other treatments to help a person regain their physical abilities. A parent's length of time in a nursing home can vary significantly, but at a minimum, Medicare or a supplemental health plan will pay for 7 to 14 to 20 days. Now, as the family caregiver during this time, it's your opportunity to figure out the next steps, which can be challenging if there are a lot of unknowns. Unknowns like, will your parent be able to return home and regain their prior level of physical independence? Will mom or dad need daily assistance? If so, who will be the caregiver? Will this caregiver be you or somebody else that you hire? If mom and dad can't return home to live independently, Will they stay at the nursing home and pay the going rate, which is anywhere between $150 to $350 per day, depending on the city where your parents live? But what happens if returning home is never an option? Will mom or dad stay in that nursing home or maybe be able to transition to an assisted living community? How much money does your parent have available to pay for care? Will you need to consider applying for Medicaid? And do you even know what Medicaid is? There's a lot of questions to ask and many options to consider. The sooner you begin these discussions, the more time you will have to work out the best plan. So along the lines of caregivers asking if a hip fracture for an elderly parent is serious, is the consideration of what your parent was like before the accident. Was the accident something like a fall off a ladder that was unexpected? Or was your parent already physically weak and in poor health? In many cases, physical weakness, frailty, multiple health conditions lead to these types of falls and fractures. Your ability to answer all of these questions can predict the next steps. Another critical factor, though, is the interest level and realistic understanding by your parents of the daily time and the effort required to put in the work to recover physically. This aspect can't really be ignored because the answer to these questions is really the most significant determinant of whether your parents will be able to live independently again. So how do you know? Think about answers to these questions. 
What was your parents' daily routine before the fall? Were they physically active? Were they on the go all the time? Or did they sit around and watch TV all day? Did they eat nutritious meals? Were they in excellent, good, or poor physical condition? How many different health conditions do your parents have? How many medications do they take? Are they socially active? What's their mental state? Are they generally optimistic and happy or depressed, critical, complaining, and anxiety-filled? Were your parents able to manage all of their daily activities without any help? Or if help was needed before this fall, for what activities, how often, and how much time? Answering these questions can have caregivers facing hard truths or maybe being in denial about a parent's actual ability, their interest, their ability to commit to recovery. While many family caregivers look at parents and think that recovering from a hip fracture will be easy, it's so much more complicated than you might imagine. I talk with so many frustrated caregivers who say their parents, a spouse, a grandparent, or another family member talk about getting better, but don't take any action. This gap between wanting to get better and understanding what changes must happen to get better is really more common than you think. Here's a very practical way to think about this. If you work, your company sets annual goals. They have a business plan, a sales plan, a marketing plan. If they produce goods, they have a production plan. There's probably a lot of processes and systems that employees of this company use. If you're the one responsible for creating a personal or a business plan, you might have used something called SMART, or you may be familiar with the acronym. SMART, S-M-A-R-T, translates to specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-phased. When you use this process to set a goal or make a change, whether it's in business or your personal life, you're more likely to achieve the goal because of thinking through the process. If you're not familiar with SMART, I'll insert a link to a background document in the transcript for this show. So again, here's how you find it. Go to PamelaDWilson.com, click on the Media tab, The Caring Generation, and then look for Episode 148 and click on the page. So let's relate SMART to a parent recovering from a hip fracture. The first question of SMART is who's doing the activity and, and what is the activity, right? So the person who's doing it is your elderly parent. The activity is physical rehabilitation. But it's actually a lot more than that. To keep moving forward to answer this question, are hip fractures for elderly parents serious? Let's talk about what most family caregivers, including healthcare providers and physicians, what they fail to consider. And really, to be fair, unless you personally experienced a severe injury or know someone who has, who shared this information with you, it's probably really hard to conceptualize or imagine what I'm about to share with you. When you think about making any change in your life, whether it's physically improving after breaking a hip, losing weight, or any other activity, you want to think about how much change is necessary. In the SMART acronym, this is the M for measurable. So for a parent breaking a hip who is not active before the hip fracture, the question to ask is how much time and effort will have to be committed to daily exercise. Going from zero exercise each day to 30 minutes or an hour or 90 minutes can be a huge change for somebody in their 70s or 80s, even for somebody in their 30s and 40s. So the question to ask is, is this degree of change possible or achievable and in what time frame? For example, maybe at the beginning, 
10 minutes is all that mom or dad will be able to exercise before they're physically exhausted. So when you think about this, how much time, is it a week or two weeks, will it take to go from 10 minutes to 20 minutes to 30 minutes or an hour? The next letter in the SMART acronym is A for achievable. What can be achieved or accomplished given the current situation? What limits or constraints exist? Does a parent have diabetes, a heart condition, or COPD that will make a difference in their ability to exercise? Will your parent exercise by him or herself, or will you or someone else have to physically be present to make this happen? Now, if your parent has memory loss or dementia, this is a whole nother conversation about can they even do these activities if somebody isn't there with them? And will they do it? So aside from memory loss, ask the question, is your parent motivated to create and carry through with this type of improvement plan and commitment? The R in SMART is realistic. We've all set goals that took longer than expected to accomplish because we underestimated the time, the effort, our motivation, our abilities. And the downside is when somebody wants to make a change and they don't see results happen right away, what happens? People become discouraged. And rather than continuing with the plan day after day, week after week, month after month, many people just simply give up. So in the realm of being R, realistic, do you or an elderly parent understand the risk of expecting too much too soon, of expecting immediate results, and then the possibility of giving up? Because giving up means having more health issues, becoming more physically disabled, and needing more care. Is that really what you want? The T in SMART is time-phased. The time to recovery from an injury or illness is different for every person. Are hip fractures for elderly parents serious? The answer is absolutely yes, depending on their prior level of daily physical activity, their physical strength, balance, nutrition, level of social activity, mindset, their motivation, outlook on life, their commitment to take care of their health, and what chronic diseases they might have been diagnosed with and how they manage these every single day. Aging and health factors significantly impact the ability to recover from any injury or illness, big or small. A 20-year-old body in good health recovers much more quickly than an 80-year-old body in poor health. The insight here, the challenge is that unless you take an interest in health at an early age, 20s, 30s, 40s, even your 50s, you may miss out on doing everything if you want to be a healthy 80-year-old who's physically and socially active. Being 80 and healthy takes a lot of consistent ongoing effort over a lot of years. It doesn't happen overnight. One way to do this is committing to using the SMART process or another goal-setting plan, whatever works for you. But remember, SMART, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-phased activities that you perform with a goal in mind. The next area that answers the question, are hip fractures for elderly parents serious, is the mental aspect of recovering from an injury or an illness. Mental considerations about the interest and ability to recover from injury are extremely significant, more so than any, anyone really imagines. We'll talk in depth about the mental challenges of recovering from a severe illness or an accident after a short break. Caregiving doesn't have to be a do-it-yourself job. This podcast, The Caring Generation, answers questions caregivers ask. The podcast is available worldwide on my website and your favorite podcast and music apps like Apple, Spotify, Spreaker, and more.
This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert and elder care consultant on The Caring Generation. Stay with me. I'll be right back. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiver, expert, advocate, consultant, and author on The Caring Generation. Check out my website, PamelaDWilson.com, where you'll find my online caregiver education program, my book, The Caregiving Trap, caregiver blog, this podcast, and my caregiver library with hundreds of articles. There's something for everyone at PamelaDWilson.com. Let's return to broadening our perspective and the way we think to answer the question of whether hip fractures for elderly parents are serious. How many of you have been in an unexpected accident for which you were hospitalized? How long were you hospitalized? What length of time did it take you to fully recover from the accident or the illness? If you've had this experience, it's likely that you are a more empathetic caregiver for a loved one with health issues or an elderly parent who falls and breaks a hip. Starting with the mental component at the most basic level, let's say an elderly parent breaks a hip, has surgery, goes to rehab, and then returns home. Now, technically, the surgery to repair the hip was a success. But now in front of mom or dad is this six or 12 month period of time where everything else has to come together. Mom or dad need to learn to walk again and do all of the activities they used to do. They may be thinking, wow, I am so exhausted and this really just sucks. I used to be able to do all these things. Now I have to start at the beginning and learn how to physically do them again with this piece of metal in my hip or this pin. I used to walk three miles a day. Today, I'm lucky if I can walk 50 feet. How long will it take me to get back to walking three miles a day? Along with being hospitalized and returning home. It's possible that a parent is constantly tired. Now, this can happen from stress to the body. So low iron levels, other types of things that can result in significant physical exhaustion after doing the simplest of activities. Mom or dad may get up to take a shower and they've got to go take an hour nap. There also may be fear of doing too much physically too soon that could result in another fall and then going back to the hospital. We can also relate this to a 30-year-old who, let's say they broke a leg and they are going back to work. The effect of physical pain on the mind and body can be significant. While a 30-year-old may think, oh, I can go back to work, after about three hours, they become so exhausted and need to go home. Any person can sleep at night and experience pain and then worry again about, oh my gosh, do I need to go to the emergency room? Is this serious? How do I know? Experiencing any significant health emergency or an accident and being hospitalized can result in emotional and mental trauma, stress, anxiety, fear. They can feel overwhelming. This aspect of health can be very difficult for someone who has not had this experience, family caregivers, to understand. What if you're middle-aged and you had an accident that totally turned your life upside down? Yesterday, you had a good job. After this accident, you can't work. You've lost your income. You're trying to find a way to support yourself. And every single day is a mental and physical struggle just to keep going. When we think about it, just because a person looks the same on the outside, on the inside, they may not feel like they are the same person. For an elderly parent recovering from a hip fracture, there may be a point where they max out on the amount of progress they can make. 
mentally and emotionally accepting that abilities will never be the same can be depressing after having hope for a full recovery. It can be challenging to accept and adjust to thinking, wow, this is as good as it's going to get. There could be memories of hiking in the woods for hours, playing golf or tennis, socializing with friends, going to concerts, and then realizing that participating independently in these activities is something in the past. Accepting and positively coping with losses requires a lot of mental positivity and mind control. The idea of accepting that priorities have changed is another mental aspect that answers the question, are hip fractures for elderly parents serious? Or how does an accident affect the life of a younger adult? Most younger people want to go back to work and older people want to resume activities they did before this event. This is normal thinking, but doing things as before an accident can be a lengthy process that takes more time than anyone ever imagines. During a recovery period, which again, depending on the event, can be six to 12 months, there can be backward and forward movement, temporary and permanent life changes. These changes can result in feeling disconnected from loved ones, activities, friends, family. There may be this constant mental challenge of how to deal with an uncertain future. Returning to being independent is a desire of most people, regardless of age. But there may be a time when an injured person accepts that their priorities have changed. For example, Maybe a husband who enjoyed mountain biking several times a week agrees to give up the activity because his wife and his children are worried about him getting seriously injured again. So he gives up mountain biking and he replaces that with another activity. Some people who want to return to work full time realize after attempting this that they don't have the energy to sustain an 8 to 10 hour workday. So they change to part time work or Maybe they totally give up employment. The experience of physical changes, emotional trauma, and all of these mental aspects can result in reprioritizing things in life that people feel to be important. Anxiety, fear, depression, fear of another accident can derail or delay the ability to fully recover. For this reason, it's important to acknowledge that more than just traditional medicine, mending a fracture or an injury, has to be a consideration for a full recovery. As a caregiver for an elderly parent experiencing health problems, how often do you talk to mom or dad about their fears, anxiety, disappointments, feeling of loss surrounding an inability, or difficulty to do things they once enjoyed that they can no longer do. If I had to guess, these conversations rarely, if ever, happen. When I look back, I never talk to my parents about these things. We as caregivers, we're generally encouraging. Adult children want elderly parents to be proactive. They want them to improve their health, get better. Caregivers are cheerleaders, but the thing that we miss or we ignore are the unspoken reasons that elderly parents might appear to refuse to help themselves or even participate in care. Many of these concerns result from the process of injury and being discharged from the hospital to home or from the hospital to rehab to home. Because when physicians talk about recovery in hospitals or rehab centers, the discussion mainly revolves around the physical body. There is usually not discussions of what it takes to return to work or what it takes to do what I used to do from an emotional perspective, right? From a mental perspective. Concerns might exist about how to manage pain. 
there's rarely a discussion about how to manage all of this with the mental aspects, right? And a lot of times, a great step could be asking for a referral to a therapist who can talk to your mom or dad or yourself about worry and anxiety about returning to a normal life, how to go back to work. What happens if you eventually do get bad news that a full recovery isn't possible? I can say that participating in patient and caregiver support groups can significantly help in these areas. Some attendees might be further along in the rehab process and they can share their experiences and a lot of people will empathize. They can share their struggles and what's good and what's bad. Trying to navigate the healthcare system after a hospitalization can also be challenging. While the recommendation is to see a primary care physician or a specialist like an orthopedist as soon as possible, how is this even possible for a person who can't walk or even drive a car? Other aspects related to asking, are hip fractures serious for elderly parents, is all the post-treatment coordination, doctor appointments, physical therapy at a location or in the home, medical bills that show up in the mail and have to be paid. Then there's communication and coordination between all these different doctors, who's prescribing and managing medications, what side effects can result from these pain medications, can they make you fall again, what about blood thinners prescribed during a hospitalization, and so on. Rather than an accident being seen as this one thing, a broken hip, arm, some other injury, looking beyond the surgery and the illness and the healing of a bone is important to supporting a full recovery. What is life like for an injured elderly parent who returns home if they can't take care of themselves and do all of the activities that they used to do? Who helps with this? For a younger person, you may also need some help. And you're wondering, gosh, how long am I going to have to stay at home before I can go to work? And then when I go to work, what happens then? What if I'm not feeling at 100% and I can't perform all of my job responsibilities at a high level? Is my supervisor going to understand? Is the company going to understand? My peers? Am I going to be afraid about receiving a bad performance review or even being fired from work? All of these concerns can manifest in emotional stress and physical pain and becoming sick again, having a relapse. Who provides support for all of the emotional and mental concerns and fears of people with serious illnesses or those who experience injuries? It's really not a question that we ask. It's not a question that even medical professionals often think about. It's an aspect of health that's rarely considered. Family caregivers see a sick parent and they wonder why they're not taking any action to get better without realizing there's a lot of underlying issues. Your coworkers may see you and say, hey, you look great, but they don't really understand what's going on underneath. For anybody who experiences a serious illness, even though it's short term, or somebody who's involved in an accident, it's important to think for yourself what kind of support will you need to fully recover. And that includes, as we're talking about here, recognizing the mental aspects and finding ways to cope or managing with all of these steps to return to full functioning over a period of time, one month, three months, six months, 12 months. Returning to being fully functioning can take a lot of daily mental and physical work to push past your fears and your anxiety while keeping yourself as safe as possible in what you're doing. Many older adults who are hospitalized have a fear of leaving the house because they're afraid something's gonna happen. They may be afraid of having another fall, so they think, well, I shouldn't be walking, I'm gonna fall and trip. Well, that's counterproductive to returning to normal activity. It's counterproductive to getting better, but those fears are, are realistic. Some people refuse to participate in previous activities. They don't wanna travel anymore. Being honest and talking to a therapist about these fears can be a way for you to work through these challenges. The mind is a very powerful healer. It's also a very powerful detractor when your fears take over. 
Participating in daily mindfulness practices like staying positive affirmations, praying, meditating, listening to music, getting out there and doing something physical can give the body and mind the boost, the energy, the motivation it needs to recover. In the best of circumstances, taking care of your health at every age to be as physically active and healthy is the best way to allow yourself to fully recover from any health concern or injury that comes your way. If you already have health concerns, find a system. Use the SMART system to set measurable, actionable, specific goals to improve or manage health problems. Work on ways to become mentally stronger. Mental strength, positivity is necessary to plan activities and motivate yourself when health problems or injuries take you off track. And if adjusting to different activities or a new life plan is in your future, find support through counseling, caregiver or patient support groups so that you can learn and be supported by others who have experienced similar situations. Are hip fractures for elderly parents serious? Absolutely. Are injuries and health emergencies for persons of all ages serious? The answer is yes, depending on the circumstances. You owe it to yourself to gain knowledge about ways to remain healthy physically and mentally so that you can live the best life possible, even in the face of things like illness and injuries that you cannot possibly predict. Thanks for joining me for this week's show. This is Pamela D. Wilson, family caregiving expert on the caring generation. If you're looking for more answers to caregiving and aging questions, visit my website where you'll find my caregiving library, online caregiver course, Caring for Aging Parents blog, my book, The Caregiving Trap, plus an extensive step-by-step program to help you learn the A to Z of caring for elderly parents or yourself. I look forward to being with you all again soon. God bless you all. Sleep well tonight. Have a fabulous day tomorrow and be healthy and happy every day until we are here together again. Tune in each week for The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson. Come join the conversation and see how Pamela can provide solutions and peace of mind for everyone. Here on Pamela D. Wilson's The Caring Generation.